Okay, welcome back, and here's the second of our little double header looking at some of the economics of economies of scale. This time, uh, two ways of answering this question. To what extent do consumers always benefit from businesses experiencing economies of scale? So looking to build two main points, develop the analysis, the application, and throw in some evaluation as well. Let's have a look. Here's my first point. The impact of economies of scale on consumer welfare uh, can be measured in several ways. One approach is to focus on the real prices that people pay for a product. Prices, for example, compared to the general rate of inflation. Another is to look at the amount of consumer surplus at the profit maximising level of output. But we need some kind of metric to think about the possible impact on consumers. Let's build the analysis in the application. And here's my diagram we're going to use for this one. I've taken out the average cost. I'm just going to look at the marginal cost curve here. So scale economies is basically working from the set of cost curves MC1 to MC2. Now if firms can achieve that, they can increase their output from Q1 to Q2. And that can bring down the profit maximising price from P1 to P2. As a result, just uh, this diagram can show the change in the level of consumer surplus. Originally, output Q1 and price P1, the level of consumer surplus was the area A, P1, B. But hopefully you can see that with economies of scale, you move to a higher output, price goes down, so the new consumer surplus is a bigger triangle, area A, P2, C. In other words, we're showing here in this diagram a clear improvement in the level of consumer welfare. So here's my text to go with this. In theory, internal economies of scale, which we talked about in the previous video, lead to lower average costs and therefore reduce prices for consumers in the long run. Good to put the time scale in. Lower prices cause an expansion in market demand and bring about an improvement in welfare shown by an increase in consumer surplus, which we did with that diagram before. The impact of economic scale can be magnified uh, if a number of firms, a number of businesses can each achieve scale, because when this happens, competition between suppliers in a, in a contestable competitive market is likely to intensify price competition and bring, bring prices down further. So the impact is greater when you have a number of firms that are able to achieve economies of scale. And then I link to sort of an equity issue that households perhaps struggling on below average incomes might then benefit from cheaper prices, particularly for essential goods and services. And effectively, they can get more product, more goods and services from each hour that they work. So in that sense, consumers are benefiting, they're gaining from economies of scale. But then we need to evaluate the point. However, a counter argument is. That's actually quite a nice evaluation phrase to use. However, a counter argument is that the economies of scale can lead to increased monopoly power in an industry. And there's no guarantee uh, that prices will go down. And then I give an example Netflix in the UK has certainly gradually increased their monthly subscription rates. Uber, the taxi company, has been heavily criticised for using algorithms to, to bring in surge pricing, multiple fares at times of peak demand, particularly if they want to drive profits to shareholders. And a lot of businesses now use quite sophisticated tracking of consumers through cookies and algorithmic price setting to try to extract consumer surplus from people who are buying and turn it into increased producer surplus or profit. There's a nice point, a point that's made clearly, built the analysis up, and then evaluated it. This is the way to write a good essay. Let's try another, uh, another example along the same lines. Economies of scale can also lead to improved welfare, so I go back to the question, by improving profitability, which then finances gains in dynamic efficiencies. Here's a slightly subtle variation on the argument. For example, and by the way, putting in, for example, that helps the application. Netflix, recent commercial success has generated the profits to enable them to invest you know, many billions of dollars each year into new programming and also into new cutting-edge digital technologies that make 
the experience for consumers better, the streaming is quicker, it's more reliable, including across a, a, a wide variety of genres, including drama, the crown, and live sport, premiership football. In the case of Amazon, the scale, the true, the, the incredible scale of choice available to consumers in what Brad Stone's called the Everything Store is simply vast. And of course, that platform is also potentially an opportunity for smaller businesses to, to, to sell to customers encouraging diversity of supply. So in that sense, I'm arguing here that um, comes of scale generate higher profits and the profits are then a means by which the technologies can improve and the choice available to consumers can improve. Gains in dynamic efficiency. However, we need to then criticise this point. So again, uh, here's a nice little evaluation phrase you might want to use in future essays. Although in theory, although in theory, increasing returns to scale and resulting profits can accelerate research and development and innovation in practice or in reality the impact might work in the opposite direction so some people have argued that actually businesses such as uber and netflix dominant firms they actually work against consumer welfare because smaller firms get squeezed out and a lot of innovation is often due to new firms coming in rather than the existing firms so the argument is that dominant platforms can actually reduce innovation by cutting competition. And then there's, there's a kind of side argument here, which I think is equally, equally valid, that a lot of these businesses are not paying much in the way of tax. So many critics of tax avoidance policies of Amazon and others, which returns less tax revenue to the Treasury. Had the government received more tax revenue, they would have had more money to fund public services, be it the NHS or be it state education. I just whack in a couple of stats at the end there that Amazon paid uh, sorry, only £4.5 million in corporation tax last year. Netflix in 2017 paid no corporation tax at all. So yes, digital platforms are providing choice and a better experience for consumers, which they're willing and able to pay for, but are they necessarily paying a fair, equitable level of tax, which has a wider social benefit, a social welfare aspect. So there we go, there's just two ways of approaching uh, this particular question.